Happy Easter, everybody! What better way to celebrate the resurrection than with a giant bunny? Ah! Or, um, better yet, let's count down the top 10 Jesuses to come back to Earth in more forms than Doctor Who. From sinister to silly, these guys all had one thing in common. I am the Messiah. On Jesus of the Bible. I am here again. Yo, I'm Christ High. <laughs> Came again. At number 10, David Icke dropped out of high school to become a professional football player. Not American football, English football. A game where you don't wear a helmet and get repeatedly hit in the head. That affects different people in different ways, but Icke woke up one day with a big announcement to make. Let me get this story right. You claim to be the son of God. Yes, you know, 2,000 years ago, had a guy called Jesus sat here and said these same things, you would still be laughing. But just let, just let me, just let me say this. They're laughing at you. They're not laughing with you. Fine. Yeah, I don't think that went the way he planned, but it didn't stop this prophet from delivering his message of peace, love, and doomsday. You have an awful lot of predictions. Mm -hmm. When may we expect tidal waves, eruptions, earthquakes. Well, it will certainly happen this year. The first sequence will begin this year. That year was 1991, and he predicted the complete destruction of humanity would be around 97. So... Why should we believe you? If I am saying that these things are going to happen this year, then we'll see, won't we? Yeah, we sure did, but hey, why dwell on the past? Since then, Ike has written over 20 books to direct your attention away from his embarrassing failures and onto his new revelations, such as the world is being run by alien reptiles in disguise and the moon is actually a hollow spaceship. Let's see, what else? Oh, recently Ike made a new announcement. One of the fundamental freedoms is the right to be wrong. The right to be an idiot. David Icke, everybody. Champion and protector of the right to be an idiot. Number nine, Marshall Applewhite. Now, if that name doesn't ring a bell, maybe this face will help you reboot your brain, puny earthlings. Yeah, this was the guy behind the infamous UFO cult Heaven's Gate. The mind that was in Jesus, that mind is in me. I am here again. Now, he had something of an identity crisis during his long career as a cult leader. Every few years, he and Bonnie Nettles, his partner in crime, literally, they were once arrested because God told them to steal a car, would take on new names. In the early days, they went as the two witnesses, traveling around to churches and delivering the good news that they were the chosen ones who would soon board a holy spaceship. For some reason, that didn't go over well with most congregations, so they rebranded as The Lab and called themselves Guinea and Pig. Aww, what woman doesn't want the endearing nickname of Pig? Then they rebranded again as, I'm not making this up, Anonymous Sexaholic Celibate Church and called themselves Tiddly and Wink. Then changed it again to Human Metamorphosis and went with Nincom and Poop. I'll bet she loved that nickname even more. And then Bo and Peep. The holy shepherds leading their flock like lambs to the... spaceship. His followers would literally die for him because whatever he called himself, Marshall was also the son of God. Number eight, Hulon Mitchell, better known as Yahweh Ben Yahweh, a name this humble man gave to himself because... I am in fact Yahweh Ben Yahweh in Hebrew. That means God, the son of God in the flesh. I am the Messiah that the whole world is looking for. Yeah, it all started in 1979 when he took a vow of poverty, started his own religion, and became a multi-millionaire. He wore expensive jewels, rode in a limousine, had lavish parties, and lots of affairs. You know, just a humble servant of God. Oh, and he was also a murderer. Did I forget to mention that? Yeah, yeah details. This god ordered the killings of over a dozen people who dared to speak out against him. So the Messiah was eventually arrested by the FBI, convicted of conspiracy to commit murder, and spent most of the rest of his holy life in prison. Number seven, Alan John, or A.J. Miller, was a Jehovah's Witness and IT consultant until, at the age of 40, he proclaimed, On Jesus of the Bible. You know, when some guys hit that midlife crisis, they just do something a little dumb, like buy a motorcycle or... Shut up. Not AJ. I've done these presentations with many thousands of people, and the majority of them feel I'm crazy and delusional. How arrogant is that? And, and what a wanker. But not listening to feedback is one of his powers, apparently. 
may be his only power. I could not perform any miracle. I chose to not perform any miracle, in fact. So no, he can't walk on water or turn it into wine, and he also can't seem to get any of his predictions to come true. The Earth itself is going to change a lot in the next few years. And what you now know as countries, will some of them will disappear completely. That was definitely going to happen by 2015. All of these things are going to, they are going to happen. Along with a super volcano that would blow up most of Europe by 2020 at the latest. But he did manage to attract a cult following, complete with an inner circle of people who, coincidentally, he says were all reincarnated from the Bible. Yep, there's Jesus' original 12 apostles, and of course his girlfriend. I'm Mary Magdalene. There's only one of me. Except this is actually the third woman he slept with and told she was Mary Magdalene. And before that, his wife divorced him for cheating on her. Holy matrimony. Or as they say in Australia... What a wanker. Hey, it must be tough being the one and only Jesus when you're... not the only one. I've had three people ring me up claiming to be me. <laughs> but according to AJ, he's the bestest as Jesus. Better than all the other Jesuses because... In each case, they don't have the extensive knowledge that I have. Ooh, shots fired by AJ, Mr. Extensive Knowledge, who can't remember these other guys' names. In... So in, in Brazil. Central America, there's a guy in Brazil. Uh, there's a guy in Russia. The guy's name is Sergei Torop, and he worked as a traffic cop until he got himself a much better gig as a holy messiah and started calling himself the Serion. He had incredible powers, including telepathy. <laughs> Or not, but he also had the power to communicate with aliens. Magic aliens that only he could see. Just, just take his word for it. I mean, I mean, look at that face. Also, he had the power of prophecy. For years, he predicted that the end of the world was imminent because Earth was about to collide with a planet called Nibiru. Now, that ended up not ever technically, you know, happening, but then he predicted a catastrophic flood that by 2022 would wipe out all of humanity except for his loyal followers. So, uh, it's only a couple years late at this point. Better carry an umbrella just to be safe. But what this prophet didn't see coming was getting arrested. In 2020, he was charged with exploiting and abusing his followers, including underage girls. So this messiah is now exactly where he belongs. From traffic cop to trafficker jailed by cops. Full circle, right, AJ? And they also don't display much love in their day-to-day -day activities. Well, there's the good displays of love, and then there's the bad kind. He's all day-to-day -day life. So the guy in Brazil, he just sits on his throne, actually. Yeah. AJ, he's all-knowing, just, you know, not good with names. The guy in Brazil, his real name is Alvaro Tias. Before becoming a messiah, he was a sitcom actor turned self-proclaimed astrologer and prophet who called himself Yuri de Nostradamus. In the early 1970s, he became famous for making these stunning predictions. Yasser Arafat would disappear in 1975. He didn't. Fidel Castro would be overthrown in 1975. He wasn't. The 1978 World Cup would not be held in Argentina. It was. A nearby skyscraper would catch fire. It didn't. So by 1979, I guess the fact that anyone was still listening to him at all gave him the permission he needed to go ahead and, you know, proclaim himself the Messiah. So ever since then, he's gone by Enri Cristo, son of God. He's done world tours. He's been arrested all over the world for petty crimes like vandalizing other churches. Oh, and he also predicted the world would end in 2012. But even though it didn't, ho hold on, hold on. He later clarified the statement. He had meant the world would end in 2012 for everyone who died in 2012. See? Totally accurate. These days, he mostly just chills at his compound, hangs out with people who weren't even alive back in the 70s, and contemplates, what would Jesus do if you gave him a scooter? Number four, Charles Manson. I was convicted for being the father of this country. I was convicted for being Jesus Christ and the devil. And don't forget murderous cult leader. In the 1960s, Manson used his, uh, 
charisma, to gather up a group of young followers who would worship him like a god. He gave them all copious amounts of LSD, pot, cocaine, and acid, and told them that they were the reincarnation of Jesus' original disciples, with him as the reincarnation of... Well, guess who? See, I've just been reborn again. But this Messiah's message was slightly different than Love Thy Neighbor. In 1969, he famously directed his cult to commit at least 11 murders, which led to his arrest and conviction. I know the cross is there. You don't have to put me on the cross. No, a prison cell will work just fine. Now what I'm trying to do is get back to Earth so I can go out in the desert. Now, who knows if Manson actually believes a word of what he's saying during these interviews, but to at least some people, he was Jesus, and to a lot more people, he was the devil. Now, prior to his career as a wrathful deity, Manson was a member of the Church of Scientology. They produce such quality people. He was also a juvenile delinquent, convicted felon, drug addict, and if that wasn't enough, white supremacist. Jesus Christ. Number three, Sun Myung Moon. He's Korean Jesus, the original K-Papa. According to him, at the age of 16, the Lord came in a vision and basically offered him the job. But I guess he wasn't quite ready yet, so he became an electrical engineer and settled down. Years later, though, he walked out on his wife and child to start his own church where he preached about the sanctity of marriage. Mm-hmm. At his new Church of Unification, or Moonies, he taught that he was the chosen Messiah destined to rule the world, and that the Hallelujah Chorus was in fact a song about him. He moved to America, and his group started aggressively recruiting young people by luring them in under false pretenses. They isolated them from family and friends, and basically reprogrammed them to reject their parents as satanic, and worship Moon as their one true father. Thousands and thousands of people were recruited to Moonies like this in the 1970s. They had to pledge their souls and all their money, making him ultra-rich. One of his other powers was being the world's greatest matchmaker. Just based on their pictures, he would pair up his followers, often complete strangers, and marry them off by the thousands in giant football stadiums. The Moonies claimed that these marriages were mostly successful, Probably because he preached that if they were ever unfaithful, they would burn in hell forever. Meanwhile, he cheated on his second wife constantly. But if you have any doubts that this man really is the Korean Jesus, here's his proof. In 1982, he was arrested and convicted of tax fraud and sentenced to two years in federal prison. According to him, this was the equivalent of the death of Jesus. Yep. And when released after 13 months for good behavior, it was just like the resurrection. Yeah. Remember how the real Jesus was nailed to an IRS audit and then rose again from the prison cell? It's basically the same thing. Number 2.0 is Jeff Ion, aka Ender Ionethos, aka Jeff Divine, aka... Fucking Jesus 2.0. Uh... Uh... He's serious. I'm uh, telling you that I'm the prophesied second coming. I am the Master Christ, or I've said that I'm the Master Christ. Yeah, I, I, I said that. I, I coined that term. I made that up. I literally just made it up. Yeah, so the Messiah and his partner Megan Plant, aka Shalia Divine, are the leaders of Twin Flames Universe, or TFU, which might also stand for They Fuck You. Here he is sharing some inspirational words with his unpaid followers. My business depends on all of you. And I want to make sure that all of you are doing your fucking jobs. Everyone's going to be looking at everyone else. Their business is to sell promises of eternal love and happiness for the low price of all your money and time, which you must devote to serving them. Sounds like a fair deal, except that people who have escaped the alleged cult report that it made them miserable, they did not find love, it destroyed their relationships, and they went broke giving all their money to this guy so he could buy these. This is the Porsche. It's a hundred thousand dollar Porsche, one of the finest Corvettes that you can possibly buy today. And I got it in a way that didn't require me to work my ass off. No, his followers work their asses off so he can sit back and rake it all in. All he and Megan have to do is make an occasional appearance to impart their spiritual wisdom on their group. And today we're talking about our sex life. Ew. On to the juicy topic of sex. Ew. The sex is good. Ew. Yeah. Great fucking sex. Yeah. We have 5D sex all the time. Yeah, 5D. Yeah. I'm banging the Christ. <laughs> yeah. He's screaming and there's orgasms and oh my god. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go shower in disinfectant now. Before he got into being the messiah, Jeff was kind of a new age hustler. Among other scammy businesses was telling people he could cure their cancer with his mind, for a fee of course. What was it Jesus said? Scam the sick and care for the Porsche. That was it. I just bought a Porsche. You know, that was sweet. Sweet Jesus. Okay, this brings us up to Jesus number one. But first, please subscribe. It really does help me put out these videos to promote critical thinking over con artists. You can also help this video get seen by clicking the like button and leave a comment about which Jesus was your favorite and why. I'd love to hear what you think. And with that, our final contestant, more than just Jesus, was also the reincarnation of the Buddha, Father Divine, Vladimir Lenin, and an Egyptian pharaoh. Bust out the Kool-Aid, it's Jim Jones! Oh, yeah! Sorry, sorry, it, it's not actually funny. This guy killed a lot of people. He ruined a lot of lives, wrecked a lot of families, and he did it all while looking like a douche. Jimmy Boy here gets the number one spot because if you're playing deranged cult leader Bingo, he checks every single box. You can follow along on your card at home. Jim didn't get much love as a child, so acted out by killing small animals, shooting at people with BB guns, and sometimes a real gun. Mm. He was also able to memorize long passages of the Bible, just like another famous cult leader. Dishonorable mention goes to David Koresh. Young Jimbo was fascinated with preachers, especially the power and control they seemed to have over their congregations. So that's what he decided to be when he grew up. But not just any preacher, he sold himself as a spiritual hero with psychic powers. He would bring people up on stage and read their minds. Really, he was just reading cue cards, but his followers bought it. He also performed faith healing miracles, like getting people to cough up chicken guts and saying it was cancer. Ew. One time he drugged one of his followers, wrapped her arm in a fake cast, and when she woke up, he told her that she'd fallen and broken it and had just come back from the hospital. Then he performed a healing ceremony, unwrapped the cast, and miracle of miracles, her arm was unbroken. This Guy, can it get any worse? Oh no. Oh yeah! Go. Just, just, just go. Jimmy was also incredibly paranoid. One time he staged a fake assassination attempt on his own life to convince his followers that the government was out to get him. He also had kind of an enormous drug habit, which made his paranoia even worse. He snorted, swallowed, and injected so many substances that it turned his eyes red, so he had to cover them with sunglasses. He told his followers that this was to protect them from the power of his holy gaze. Finally, his paranoia led him to flee the country, taking around a thousand followers with him, promising them paradise on earth. They set up camp in Guyana, and of course, he named the settlement after himself, the Prophet. But life in paradise, aka Jonestown, was by all accounts horrible. Food and shelter were scarce, everyone was forced to work 10 hours a day, and then listen to Jones preach for several more hours. I don't know which one of those was worse. And then if he felt like it, he'd wake them all up in the middle of the night to rant some more. If anyone dared to complain about any of this, they were reported and sometimes severely punished. So between the exhaustion, indoctrination, and abuse, Jones wielded almost total power over his cult. Then in 1978, everything came to a head when US Congressman Leo Ryan personally came to investigate allegations of abuse at Jonestown. That did not go well, as several members slipped him notes saying things like, please help me escape. And as the congressman left to deliver his report, Jones ordered his guards to murder the man. Being psychic and all, Jim knew he wouldn't get away with that, and he was determined to take his followers down with him. At gunpoint, they were all made to drink poison made from cyanide and not even the real stuff, cheap knockoff flavor aid. Yeah, kind of a downer, but um, hey, I just got a new high score in deranged cult leader bingo. So, who was your favorite Jesus? Or is there anyone you think I left out? This channel is still small and growing, so I'd really love to hear from you about this, or let me know what other topics you'd like to see. Until then, stay sane.